Hi, my name is Phil Jose, and uh, thanks for checking out my video about my class. It's uh, called uh, Instructional Craftsmanship, and the idea is centered around trying to help you get better as a fire service instructor. Uh, it's a fire department instructors conference, and I want to focus on you as an instructor. So what are we going to do in the class? I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, an idea that we'll talk about in the class, and I'll, at the end I'll give you a little more information about me if you want to stick around for that. So uh, over the course of the class, we're going to have a lot of interaction and uh, a lot of information coming from you and going to you, uh, methods and, and um, different ways that you can structure courses and structure interactions with your students to try and get the knowledge into them, right? Because that's what we're hoping to do as instructors is, is have our students walk away a little bit smarter. So let's talk about um, the idea of mental models, and I, I'm sort of stealing that from the recognition prime decision making. And uh, as a fire service instructor, you should really understand that model of uh, recognition prime, where we give them a problem, they uh, someone goes into their slide tray and pulls out a slide that gives them the solution, they implement the solution, and they sort of um, evaluate if it's working and then they sort of keep moving around that to, to get uh, the problem solved over the course of time. So the mental model though is, is uh, being able to recognize if a solution will work in this particular case. And you do that by taking your slide from your slide tray, comparing it to the current problem and recognizing where it's the same, where it's different. And if it's strong enough to, if the idea or the solution is strong enough or similar enough that you can be confident that it will work. So rather than spending too much time in the recognition prime side of things, um, just understand that uh, we're going to talk a little bit about mental models. So if you want to have your students solve problems, um, a way that I recommend to do that is to draw out their mental models and then make them more clear. So let's talk about a uh, personnel problem. You go in, you have a personal problem. You, you as an instructor, uh, you might even refer to your department's policies and practices and say, hey, here's sort of an ideal solution to this personnel problem. You, you write it up, um, sort of give it the descriptors, maybe similar to the way that you would for promotional, uh, but this is definitely not a promotional, but it, that sort of information. Bring your company officers into your company officer meeting or into a class, you give them the the problem that you've written up, uh, but instead of telling them what the ideal is, what you do is you um, ask them. You ask them to give a solution to the problem. And so you have a slide over here uh, that represents the ideal, and you have them build a slide that represents their solution to the problem. So you take it from an individual student, have them outline how they would solve the problem, sort of bring it to the group, um, summarize it and then ask, start asking the students questions about the solution that was built. And by structuring the questions in a, in, um, a way to get the information from the students, recognizing that some are experts, some are novices, uh, some are journeymen, some are craftsmen, uh, you can take the student-built model, right, the student-built mental model, and as a group, you get them to strengthen the areas where uh, it's great, to identify the areas of weakness and maybe either eradicate those or to uh, provide strategies to counteract weaknesses in the personnel problem. Um, and you're trying to make their solution that the, is student built um, as least as strong and as vivid as the ideal. Now, the interesting thing as you do this is um, very often, in fact, most of the time, uh, you as an instructor also get new discovery because um, your ideal is based on your history, your understanding, um, you know, everything from your background uh, to the elementary school that you went to, right? It's your, the sum total of your experiences. The student bill one's going to represent a lot of people's experiences. And so as part of that, they may have solutions that you never would have thought of that are great solutions to this personnel problem. Might even be better than your ideal. Um, and so you get to strengthen your ideal problem solving for the next time that you present that problem to a group of students. 
So that's just one um, topic. There's uh, mental models. We also talk about questioning strategies, uh, uh, who, who to ask questions, how to ask them, how to structure them. Uh, we talk about um, places where uh, you might end up in a, a, you start asking questions and you find out you're in a hole. And uh, the first rule of holes is to quit digging, right? Uh, we also talk about uh, how to build, um, find a wingman and, and have people uh, help you get better over the course of time. Uh, you can do it on your own, but it's certainly a little more fun and a lot more effective if you have some help. So that's about the class, uh, one idea that's in the class. Uh, myself, uh, 27 years with Seattle Fire Department. I'm currently the Deputy Chief of Training. So I uh, run all the recruit uh, side of the house as well as the in-service training. I have just a great group of officers uh, working down there. And they, uh, boy, they make me look good. Um, and I just try to do everything I can to support them. Uh, been working for Seattle. Um, pretty much uh, all over the city at some point in time. Um, engines and trucks, a good, varied experience. Been teaching at FDIC for over 10 years. And I really value that experience and the relationships there. And I hope that uh, you recognize that I have something to offer you as a fire department instructor and uh, something to help make you a better instructor uh, going forward. And I hope you come to my class. It'd be great to meet you then. Thank you.